How you doing? You alright, yeah? Mindset Mashup Podcast, here we are. And listen, this is gonna be a good one. We just I was just chopping it up just briefly and I already felt the flames coming on. So look, let's let's <laughs> let's, let's 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 just cut the red tape. First of all, if you're here, thank you for being here. Go subscribe to the channel. Go if you're on Apple, go leave a review. Just help man out. We reached top 200 in the UK for entrepreneurship last month. So look, go do something helpful for me, man. And I just want to introduce my guy, um, Mr. Ishmael, Mr. Oshodi. You've probably seen him on Insta. He's a bit Insta famous and all that. Um, um... <laughs> Welcome to the podcast, my guy. Thanks for coming. How you doing? Thank you, my bro, man. I just keep myself to myself, brother, to be honest with you, you know. I keep my stuff self to myself, bro. Yeah, and you're still Insta famous. And you, and you yeah, st- I'm more time. I might, you know what? I could do a lot more online, but I kind of, I, I, I purposely discipline myself not to look like, you know, sometimes you can do it to the point where it looks like, oh, it's a bit erratic. I'm not an erratic person. So tell me about that intention. So like, what do you feel? So like staying off social media does for you? Is it a discipline thing or what is it for you? I'm not doing it for, I'm not doing it for the hype. Every time it gets the hype, I withdraw myself. I tell never, me about I that. Never, I never get to the point where, it's like, oh yeah, my Insta's popping. Oh, my Snapchat's popping. As soon as it's, it's, it becomes a bit overwhelming, I tap out. That's nice. I, so you... out, I can log out for three months. I can log out for two months. It's not really about the fame. It's about the purpose. What's mm. the purpose of me being there? What am I doing on there? Every message is a message. Every picture has to have a message. It's, it's very relatable. I keep it certain sectors. Keep it family. Keep it business. Keep it positive. I don't really get involved in the pasa pasa. I can write on other people's pages, try to direct things. I laugh, I banter. But that's not really what I would do. You get it? Yeah. So for you, I like what you said. Keep it family. Keep it personal. Keep it business. I like that. Yeah. No, I, I like that, and that's that's nice because I think as a as a businessman, I think it's easy to get caught up in that Instagram hype, and you forget. Like, I like what you said there. It's about per like it's about purpose. And I think sometimes, especially in business, it's easy for people to get carried away in the in the in the hype of, of the gram. Do you know what I yeah. mean? I've been online. I've been online a long time. Like Instagram is one thing, but like I used to run an event something. So I've been on the whole, I've been online since like 2000 and I've had the whole back chat, that whole stuff. I had the Facebook era, had the Twitter era, the Instagram, the Snapchat. So for me, I can tell you people become more out of touch. They feel like they're more in touch in line. You see people online, they're, they're, they're writing in a hundred places. You see them in public, they're quiet, bro. <laughs> I'm like, I'm approaching them like, bro, I swear you are, yeah, my brother. I, like, bro, people are even shocked when I post them. Because everyone I follow, when I see you, I show you love because I follow you. I know who I follow. Like, yeah. I'm not going to follow you and ignore you or act like I don't. So it's like people need to understand it's, 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 it's a metroverse. Yeah. Nice. Instagram is a metroverse. Yeah. You're obviously thinking about metroverse now, but it already is one. Yeah. You're in a room full of strangers and you're trying to create a world. But whenever you come out of that world, you need to remember that it's just what you created. So you need to create something similar to your real world. I, I, Not something that's got such disparity that you can never get reality. I, I love that. And you know what? This got said the other day, and I think Stormzy said it in the interview, like, real life is lit too. <laughs> do you know what I mean and it's so true and I think people forget like they're busy stunting on the gram but look I want to bring it back because I'm, I like just from you speaking then I know you've got a you've got a, a good background in business business isn't a new thing for you you know like you're not own like this is you've been around for a while so tell us about your background as an entrepreneur as a businessman um I think from young I'll tell you the first business I like initially, when I was younger, I used to do like my older brother used to come and say, Oh, so there's property opportunities. You know, they used to do the whole scheme where a bunch of people put money, you take the money, you invest. So that was like the first dibble and dabble. But what was actually mine 
was I did I had an events company. So I started uni, I was doing business and events management. So I started uni doing business and events and I opened an events company, right? And I opened an events company a month after I started studying business and events because my ideology was, if I'm going to study something, I'm going to leave. Implement. Without nothing, I'm going to have to start again. So I deferred uni three times, but I graduated with having an events company and I graduated. A lot of people graduated and they didn't even know what they were doing. They were going to go and get jobs and stuff like that. They were just now starting to pan life. So that was my first thing. I did events company for a while. Then um, after the event, during the events company, I did a lot of um, not just personal little investments still with my older brother because he's much older than me. So he's, he's, um, he's into a lot of IT. He's the one that first showed me about all this them stocks and all these things that I don't really get into them. I know them, but I'm more a man that I'm in business. I need that money. I need to turn one pound to one pound 20. I need to turn <laughs> one pound 20 to one pound 80. I need to, you know, that like, it's, it's, it's rotational. After the events company, I've had that. Then um, from the events company, I went into, I went to selling bakery. Then from selling bakery, I went into wholesale. Then I left wholesale for a bit and I did business consultancy for other people. And then after I was doing business consultancy for them, I was like, oh, you know what? This is, I was doing business consultancy and I was doing like distribution for brands. So I was doing that, like pushing brand new brands out there. And I was like, oh, you know what? This is thing. And then went into food truck. Then from the food truck, went back to wholesale. Then from there, the lockdown came, then we went into kitchens. And then this year we opened our second kitchen. So yeah, like just constant progression, you know what I mean? Like these are all the things that are, that are visible and you've got the non-visible things that you do. But, but that's it, but I'm just constantly in it, you know? I'm glad to have people around me that they get onto me. You know, like they even things like these podcasts, they're like, you should do a lot more, you should do. I'm like, bro, I've been up since 6 a.m. I've been at my house at 6.30. I've loaded up a jiffy this morning. I've done a route for business to business. I've gone from there to my daughter's school, um, sports day. From my sports day, I brought the jiffy back to Charlton. I've offloaded the jiffy. I'm, I'm about to drive and I realise, oh, damn, I've got a podcast. You can't understand. I'm living a real life. So tell us how you, how you manage being a family man and a businessman. Mm. My wife is a businesswoman. My wife's doing business longer than me. My wife's father, my mom's a businesswoman, but I never work, I never went to my work with my mom every day. So mm. my missus is a businesswoman. So my missus kind of watched her dad build a multi-million pound company. You understand? And she's been involved in it where your turnover is good turnover over the years. And she's watched it from scratch. She's watched it from nothing where you're begging people to take the product to the point where people are phoning you down saying, oh, we don't have that. We need that. So she kind of understands a lot of business, she kind of is very understanding to long hours. She does long hours herself. She's involved in a lot of things I do, you know? Excuse me, we speak to one another. So I think that's what kind of helps it. In regards to, excuse me, in regards to the kids, we kind of have like um, a living nanny. Yeah. So we got to have someone that lives in the yard yeah. and helps with looking after the kids and all them kind of stuff. You know what yeah. I mean? So. I feel like that's really what helps me with it. I'm very, I'm a dad and a father, apart from being a husband, because I always take time out for the kids. Like, if my daughter say, look, dad, I want to do this. I'm involved in it. I'm trying to get it sorted for them. I'm trying to be part of it. I'm trying to include myself in it. I'm trying to make sure that it happens. Like, I go to the classes, the drama class. I'll be there for the sports day. I'll be there to say, have you done your... Your Kumon, are you ready for your spelling test weekly? We do the spelling. So I'm always making sure that they don't know that that's got a whole nother kind of lifestyle, you know. I mean, no, he's a businessman, but this man's actively in our life. Yeah. You understand? Yeah. You, get the bikes, you go to the bike ride and you do, you do what you need to do. Yeah. And I feel like that's what helps it. It helps it when you have a partner that's with you in it rather than just you yourself and you feel yeah. like someone's not understanding you. You get your down days because people don't like to talk about the down days. People like to make life seem like so. You get your down days where you just feel like is this overwhelming? But then you gotta understand that with everything you have is a blessing. You have some days you're not feeling up to it. 
and you have some days you're feeling up to it. But in all days, it's a blessing. Mm. If you're still here, if you're still breathing. And every day is a blessing because someone has less, someone has more. The person that has more wants more. The person that has less wants more. You know, you have something you should be grateful. That's good. You know what I'm saying? I feel like that's what really helps me is my frame of mind just staying positive. And do you understand? It's like, you got to navigate, you know, you might not be the best boxer, but if you go training every day, you're going to knock one someone out one day. Yeah. I, I say that a lot as well. If you keep knocking out the doors, something's going to open. <laughs> you understand? Like, we do a lot of events. I've done a lot of events with catering. I've done a lot of... The catering is more of a, a younger generation kind of thing. You get to meet a lot of young people. You get to do a lot of But events. you're in catering now, aren't you? That, that's what you do now. No, I'm, I'm in catering and wholesale. My and wholesale. Main, my, my, I don't, well, there's not a main thing. So I've got a warehouse in Raynham. I've got a warehouse in Raynham. And um, what it is, is with the warehouse, with the warehouse, I, I, I import stock from Nigeria. So I bring in containers from Nigeria and I also buy containers in the UK. So we have a, I have a Monday to Sunday wholesale distribution business. Mm. Selling up to 57 products. I've got a 5,000 square feet warehouse. Mm. Well, 4,000 something. But when you look at the outside and everything, I use every aspect of it. It's not just what they count inside. Like I put pallets outside. Mm. So when you look at the whole thing, it's like 5,000. So that's, that's a Monday to Sunday business. Mm. Then we have the kitchens. That's a Monday to Sunday opening as well. We've got two of them. And then we have a mobile food truck that goes business to business. And that's a Monday to Friday. So mm. that there's no aspects of not being busy. Yeah, yeah. So you got, so that was that, that was three businesses that, that you're running. Yeah. Whole, wholesale, the corporate, two. Wholesale, which is also the distribution, wholesale distribution, that's one. Yeah. Then you've got the two kitchens. Yeah. Oh, you got the two kitchens. Sorry, I thought it was three. Yeah. Two, yeah, kitchens. two kitchens. Yeah. yeah and yeah. then we have a mobile truck. Yeah. That goes to businesses. So, you look at it like you're running four businesses if we separate it. Yeah, 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 yeah. So so one tell kitchen, us... One kitchen is one, one kitchen is another. Then you've got the mobile one, and then you've got the wholesale one. So it's technically four separate businesses. Yeah, that sounds... like You sound like a, a, a busy man. And, uh, but I'm they, eating do... while talking to you on the Zoom. Yeah. And I apologize. <laughs> yeah, really, if you're I'm, not watching I'm, this on YouTube... I'm hungry, my bro. Yeah, keep eating, keep eating, man. No, no worries, <laughs> no worries. So, going going back to those early entrepreneurial days, what were some of the biggest lessons that have helped you get to where where you are? What's something that you clocked early that sort of that stayed with you up until now? Honestly, bro, there's no rush, <laughs> bro. There's no rush. You might, and this is a proper, proper, proper advice that 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 I've experienced. You might believe that millions of pounds is gonna better your life. Before it betters your life, it's gonna stress the fuck out of your life, mm. and you might not be able to handle that stress, mm. and you might not then get that million. Mm. You take your time. You go at it every day. You build it, as they say, organically. Do not go and put GMO inside what needs to be organic. Do not rush the process. Do not worry about who says you should be at stage 10. Do not worry about how you look to others. Do not worry about those dirty clothes at the end of the night. Do not worry about sleepless nights. Do not worry about missing parties. Do not worry about envy do not worry about none of those things but i tell you now you take your time there's nothing better than taking time them kids you have or them family you have you yourself you did not grow overnight take mm. time you went from a baby to today where you're doing a podcast how many years did it take you yeah think about life like that in the beginning the first two years you are crawling you're just about walking at one. Some people don't walk till two. So the person that's walking at one, don't envy them. Mm. The person that's walking at two might end up being better run at four. Don't worry about your star. Where do you don't think that about... comes from? Where do you think that comes from? Why, why do you think people want to rush, rush, rush the process? 
they're watching other people. Yeah, I agree. They want to. They think they can get it and get out. There's no getting out. Yeah, you're in it for life. <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna get it and get out. It's not possible. So that means yeah. you're gonna die. Yeah. If you want to get in and get out, that means you want to get in and die. If you mm. want to get in and keep it, brother, take your time, family. Yeah. Take your time, sit back, eat some rice, do some podcasts. You're going to be all right. <laughs> You're going to be all right. But you ain't going to worry too much about that rush. Because when you're rushing, you're going to make mistakes. And, and then they become expensive. And, and I think, how can you enjoy... How can you enjoy something when you're rushing it? Like, if all you... Because you're almost skipping, like, the good moments. Do you know what I mean? Like, you're just... Because, like, bro, like, I'm I'm early in my entrepreneur game. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm early. I've been at it for a while, but I feel like I'm at that place now where I'm not rushing. And do you know what, bro? I'm enjoying it so much. Like, because I'm not rushing. I'm not adding all this pressure on myself. I'm not looking at this person over here, this person on the ground, thinking, oh, I wish I was him, or, oh, why am I not doing this? I'm taking my time. And it feels good. Well, let me, you know one thing, what you're saying is great and it's perfect because one thing that I've learned a lot of things. So when I say one thing, it's just another one thing from the lessons. <laughs> yeah. I've learned a lot of goddamn stuff. Yeah. One thing I learned is, another thing I've learned is, why are you watching that person? Yeah. Facts. Why are you watching that person? You watch that person and feel like, Oh, that person's this, that person's that. There's people that had a podcast before you that are probably thought to message me, have never messaged me. You've seen me and you've messaged me. You're an opportunist. You're going to go further than that person. Just take action. Stop Stop looking at man. Stop looking at this person. Looking I at this reply, per- and I'll tell you, I've said this before. I reply every DM. I reply every DM. I pick up the phone. I speak to people. I've probably spoken to more people than I know them. Whenever I go out, people are like, you're Mr. Shuddy, innit? I'm like, yeah, my bro. You're Mr. Shuddy, yeah, bless him. Oh, you're right. I love that thing you did, you know. I see that thing you did, you know. Da, 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 da. Bro, one person is enough for me, but having hundreds of people say that, hundreds of people, I don't even know where I got 11,000 followers from. I don't know where, you, where, you came, where they came from. Like, where they come from? <laughs> I don't, that's why I'm so, I'm so, I'm like, is this meant, am I meant to accept it or am I meant to just, I don't accept it, I just leave you, I'm like that with it. That's right, cool, y'all, y'all carry on doing what y'all doing. When but that's the message, me, but that's the message, oh, isn't it? You've never, when you detach yourself away from all these, all these numbers, all these things, and you just take action and like you take these little steps day by day, things start happening. Well, I don't know. Where did you see me? Uh, oh, just Instagram, I think. And I did um, I did a podcast recently. Chisel. With Gable. Big them up, yeah? And I'll tell you now, they came to my warehouse and they recorded me, right, yeah? And there's a part of it where I said something, but I didn't say it in a negative way. And one of my friends was upset with me and my friend's sister must have messaged me and goes, oh, I didn't really like that thing you said, blah, 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 blah. I said, yo, I'm very sorry. And I took it off my page, right? And looking back at it now, I shouldn't have taken it off my page. Because to me, I didn't say nothing from nowhere. But that's just the kind of person I am. It's love over fame. Mm. I don't need that. I don't need that negativity. Or I don't need that negativity. I don't need you having an issue with me. I'd rather take the love yeah. than that. So yeah. I'll take it off. Do you understand? So that's really what I'm about. I'm about, brother, you got love for me, I got love for you. Sister, you got love for me, I got love for you. I'm not really in the negative. I don't know what that is. So, so how, how, how do you manage that in business? How, because on, I, I completely agree with you. And I think love is so much more powerful than any other emotion that we can give. But... But how is that? How do you go about managing that in business? You want the truth? Yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> I'm an animal in business. Tell me. I'm not a lover in business. Okay. Explain I'm a, that. 
and in business. Business is very easy to understand. There are two people. Mr. A wants to be first, Mr. B wants to be first. Who's gonna be first? Whoever works harder to be first. Business ain't about love, it's about money. And I, I do agree. I do agree with that because ultimately a business is all about profit and loss. It's and I think that's profit and loss is not about like, love. P and L said don't mix business with love. But but I, I as I speak to you, I can't imagine you being anyone else apart from who you are in business. That's true, but I didn't come in to lose. Yeah, okay. I don't, speak like, I don't speak like a loser. Yeah. I don't do business like a loser. Yeah. I'm very direct. Yeah. I'm not going to write notes on, oh, when he says this, let me write that. I'm not <laughs> going to do that. Like, I live in a real world. These are invoices I need to sort out. I'm in a room. You understand? This is stuff. This is items. You get what I mean? Like, I'm, I, I live in reality. These are stuff like, this is the, got the office space up here. Got the staff downstairs. Do you get what I mean? So I, I understand what I'm trying to do. So I'm not going to let no one stop it. I, yeah. like I said, I don't hate you. Me and you can have a drink, but I don't want to be second. Yeah. <laughs> and is that, is, have you always had that? Have you always had that competitive edge? Yeah. And I've I, always been... I've always been on it. My events company was called On This Tin. <laughs> ODT. When you saw it, it was ODT. <laughs> ODT events. I, got, I was always on it. I've always been on it. I've always been. My friends will tell you, he's, if he's not doing something, it's fine. But if he's doing something, he's going ham. He's going so hard, you're going to be like, well, what's wrong with my man? I don't know no other way. Do, do you think no one this, has ever come to help me do something? Do you think that's been diluted this generation? Yeah, because they think it's they, it's on like but I tell you straight, these generations are different. My nephew's downstairs, yeah. He's come from uni. He's finished his first year of uni. From the second week of May till last week, he wasn't he was at home at his mum's. So I've gone to his mum's house and I'll be like, brother, what are you doing? You're up there eating up near your mum's grub. How's your mum working on your crap father the day after he was at work? He's just grinding. They need... They, they relax. They relax. They're not on it. They're not hungry like that. They Let me ask you different this. different ways of making money now, remember. Yeah. And that that's where I think... Because that's what I was going to ask you. Because you're a successful man. You run successful businesses. Inshallah. Inshallah. Pay a lot of bills. And, and yeah. And... I, I know a lot of people that work hard and I know a lot of people that aren't always successful. So would you say your success comes from hard work or would you say your success comes from maybe other other areas? It comes from a mixture of things like love does. Love is a word, but it's mixed up with different things to create the love. you got feelings, yeah. you've got emotions, so cool. So success is a bunch of things. Success is just a word. Success is hard work, discipline, Dedication, sleepless nights, reading books, management, structure, wins, losses, conversations, opportunity, luck, that's success. Yeah. What 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 does loss mean to you? It means I'm closer to winning. <laughs> you better lose, boy. You better lose, 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 lose. Yeah. And come back to win. Bro, nothing is better than a comeback. It's true. No, nothing. Don't ever be afraid to come back. When you lose, you go out, you stretch. You say, yeah, cool, brother. I lost. I lost, but I'm coming back. It's, you guys uh, don't leave that table. I'm coming back. Make yeah. sure that table's got more guap on it. So if I leave that table and you got half an M on it, make sure I come back and you got a couple M on it. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want more when I come back because I'm gonna I'm not training for what was there. I'm training for more. I understand more. So, I, and I completely agree. 
And I, I, there's this Martin Luther King, King quote that I love, and it's my favourite quote, and I've said it on this podcast before, which is, the ultimate measure of a man is not where he stands in times of comfort and convenience, but where he stands in times of uh, controversy and challenge. And that quote, I think, is the biggest measurable of whether a person will be successful or not and what hap- what it's easy to be good when it's good it's easy to be good when the sun's shining but are you going to be good when when there's a storm outside brother the storm is the best thing for anybody yeah i agree the snow that sleep that ice that stuff that gets you prepared for taking your shirt off summer is a summer's a holiday <laughs> yeah. yeah, but it need be whilst it was sunny. If it started raining, you wouldn't go hiding. You would handle it. Do you understand? Yeah, yeah, you yeah, yeah. It, you would handle it, and that's so, what people people don't get. They're ready to they're ready to look forward to the rewards, bro. The rewards come from the sacrifice. Yeah, yeah. So I'll tell you a quick story. Yeah, before you ask the next question, there was a time. Yeah. I needed money like years ago. Like I think, like 2016, I needed money. I lost a good amount of money. I needed money, and I was looking at my Rolex watch, and I needed money. Then I went out with my friend that night, and I was saying I need money, blah blah. The guy was like, "You don't need money. You have a Rolex watch." Next time I got rid of it, and I had money. We buy things to keep them until shit hits the fan. We don't buy things to keep them while shit is in the fan. Those things you buy that have value, that increase value, you're meant to get rid of them when you need them. You bought them for profit. It is a business. My watch is a business. My car is a business, but it's a loss I learned with cars. Mm. Cars are losses. The cars I had, I saw their losses. So <laughs> I, I like driving runners, bro. When yeah. I want to find I know where to go and get a fancy car. My brother, my cousin. My brother got loads of fancy cars. I don't own one. I don't own a fancy car. I got, I got runners, runners. I can get in it and drive. Van, boom. Yeah. Down and dust and come back. I got vans. I got things that produce the money for vehicles. But just, just explain that bit about what you said about buying, buying something and then selling it when, when, when you need that. Like just explain. Like, why? Why do you think that? I, I I believe I believe like this. Yeah, you buy a house. Yeah, two hundred and fifty thousand pound. You buy a house. Ten years later, you need money. You go to the bank. They say, "Bob, I can't give you a loan." You're like, "Why?" They say, "Because we just can't give you a loan." You're like, "Oh, but I've got a house." They're like, "Oh, we can give you a loan." That's value. Yeah, you have a watch. You go to the jeweler. Oh, I need money. Or you go to your friend. I need money. Your friend saying, "Bob, I ain't got no money." You go to the jeweler and say, "I need money." The jeweler's like, "Yeah, I got money for you. But give me that watch." So, are you saying leveraging your assets? You have to leverage your assets against your your future. Yeah. Okay. This is business. You understand? I'll sell. I'll sell one van because I want to buy another van. I'm not gonna keep. I'm not gonna keep it like that. Yeah. To keep that van. I'm gonna sell it because I wanna, I wanna leverage up. I wanna level up. Yeah. So tell me about tell me about mindset. Mindset is your lifesaver. Yeah. Mindset is what saves your life. It's the difference between where you're gonna be and where you are. Yeah. If you can go through the worst times and have a smile on your face, surely good times will come. Mm. And if you go through good times and have a smile on your face without being arrogant, staying humble and still start helping people and giving back and stuff, surely better times will come. Do you understand? Yeah, yeah, so, resilience. That, that resilience to keep, keep going. Smile when you're down. Smile when you're on your way up. Give back when you're at the top. That's the mindset I've got. I've got the mindset of if I lose everything, but I don't lose my life, I can get it all back. <laughs> That's good. That's bro, good. Yeah, it's bro, true. Bro, man's on the phone to me today, yeah, and saying business success. Bro, God forbid, bad thing next year, 
if I don't have money, I want you to come and interview me again. I'm not going to run for me. Mm. I'm going to say, yo, bro, I ain't got peas right now. And this yeah. is how I feel. And I want people to understand when they feel like this, I didn't give up. I'm yeah. back on the same podcast. And how do you, how much do you think that mindset has attributed to your success? Again, I'm on my way to being successful, inshallah. For me personally, I'm not at success yet. No, no, but but you... Okay, I've got, that, I've got the explain. mind of a successful person. Yeah, yeah. I've got the actions of a successful person. I've got the energy of a successful person. But I'm looking for certain things for me personally. There's personal goals that I would like to reach. And I'm vision. Waiting. you got a today, vision. Today, right now, today, I'm my, I'm successful today because I'm alive today. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. I'm successful in my, in my life. In business, I can be more successful. In life, I'm successful. I'm healthy. I've got food in front of me. I'm blessed. I'm chatting to you. We're talking about life. We're relating. We're, you understand? We're, but we're gelling. I'm happy. In business, I might have... I might have money that's coming up to me and I'm like, oh, shit, man. I wish I didn't have to pay that money. Or, oh, shit, man. I wish I had enough money not to worry about that money. Mm. There's levels. But even the person that's got, the person that's got a million has got thousands of pounds problems. The person that's got hundreds of millions has got tens of millions problems. The person that's got billions has got hundreds of million problems. Yeah. Problems don't go. They don't disappear with money, do they? Problems, problem is like breathing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it is. Every day there's a problem. Your car, your family, your uncle, your cousin, your business, your clothes, your this, your friends, your this, your envy, your laptop, your MacBook, your, your memory card. Bro, bro, problems is where life comes from. When you were born, I always analyze things. I correlate them. When I was born, I had a problem. I couldn't walk. I could crawl. But I couldn't walk. Then I solved my crawling problem and I started wobbling. Then I solved my wobbling problem and I started walking. Then I solved my walking, I started running. Then I mm. solved my running, I wanted to jump. Then I solved my jump, I wanted to climb. That's mm. life. Yeah. And then that's life, like you, life you've lived. I don't worry about that, Timbo. I just want to be here to see it. Mm. Whatever it is, I want to be here to see it. The person that's 98, is richer than somebody that had a billion and died at 55. Yeah. They got to see life, bro. And I'm always preaching life. And people are like, yeah, but brother, life. Something you can't buy. You want to equate it to money. Yeah. How? You can go and ask a multi-billionaire right now. I will give you times 10 of your wealth. Go and ask Elon Musk. You're the richest man in the world, right? Apparently. I will give you times 10 of your wealth. Die. Like, what are you talking about, brother? Yeah. That way. I'll give you money to keep quiet and get out of my face about that. How much is life? Yes. And I think I think too many people take that for they do. granted. Because that they say a healthy man wants many things, an unhealthy man wants one thing. <laughs> and I just think that, say that again. A, a healthy man wants many things. An unhealthy man wants one thing. So what's the what's 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 the best thing? Yeah, no, it's true. And I think and I suppose you can sort of mix that in with gratitude. I think when we change our expectations for gratitude and when we come across problems, we're like, you know what? I'm grateful for this problem. I'm grateful that I'm sitting here worrying about my business. I'm grateful that this is a business problem and this isn't a health problem or this isn't a this. And I think gratitude for me personally. That's been such a big part of helping me shift my perspective to a more positive mindset, more positive way of looking at things. You know, every time you do a podcast, yeah, you know you're giving gratitude. Yeah, I mean, I, I, yeah, I'm you're always learning, you're learning from speaking. Yeah, this is why I've done it, bro. You're learning from speaking. The world is in such a place that it needs people. Yeah, the world needs people. I like people, so I give back to people. Mm. I, everybody has a gift. Yeah. Some people want, as I said, some people would love to have your setup. It's not rocket science, but you can't do it. That's your gift. To be able to set that up, 
and get things on board where you can spread it out. My gift is to be able to speak. Like people are like, you're a natural speaker. I'm like, yeah, yeah I guess so. <laughs> but I don't know how I became one. I didn't practice it. I didn't study it. I've never said, oh, I'm going to study how to be a speaker, you know. But people, no, nah, bro. Me is me. I happen yeah. to have embedded in me a gift of speaking that gets out there and a character of fulfillment. I'm, I'm all right. But I think that's what makes you such, like, such a, just a great person just to chat to in general because it isn't about, you're just out here being you. And I think that's something that people need to do more of. Like, I think, oh, I think it's a Drake one. It says, you can be anyone you want in the world, even yourself. <laughs> yeah. And I think the happiest people that I've spoken to, I think this is, this is episode 30 or 31. Everyone I've spoken to, the happiest people I've spoken to, bro, they're just them. <laughs> They're just them. That's it. Like that's the secret. Like, and if they can do that in business, in family, in every area of their life, life oh, is going to be good. When I'm around my mum, yeah, I'm like this. Yeah. When I'm around, and that's the woman who made me. Mm. Who else do I need to impress? Yeah. <laughs> I'm not a negative person. I'm not a negative person. Have you ever been? Have you ever been? Yeah. Yeah. Not, not negative, moaning. Mo yeah. Oh, shit, man, why is this happening? Why is this happening? Why is this happening? Why is this happening? Brother, you can look at why or you can look at fix it. If you need 10 pounds and you're thinking, oh, I need 10 pounds, I need 10 pounds, or you just shut up and you're going to get 10 P. You get to ten pound. Yeah, it's true. They didn't say one pound. I said if you go and get ten p, ten p, you get to ten pound, bro. But don't sit and start telling me you need ten pound. Go and get ten p. No, go I'll, and get ten p. Small steps are massive. Remember what I said about organic, no GMO. Yeah, no there's no stairways for life. Yeah, that's why not like each to their own. But for me to go under a needle, to, to hide in a part of me, I, I, I can't understand why. I'm never, I can't, I, I, I get it. But if something looks the way it does at 40, it's gonna change by 50, then I'm gonna need to change it by 50. I'm gonna need to change it by 60. I'm gonna need to change it by 70. But if I do not touch it, and I use the natural ways of doing it, it's gonna adjust itself. Yeah. And you do that by just taking consistent action. You, and that you, you're going to go and do something and need to go in the gym. So why don't you just go to the gym? Yeah, 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 yeah. You want something to be a certain way. So that's just me. I like, I like things natural. One thing that I, I, apart from that, that I don't mind is teeth. Teeth? You can get your teeth fixed. You, that one... No. You are loud because it's needed. That one is you might have had a chip somewhere or this somewhere or that somewhere. But for me, body wise, I ain't had no chip somewhere. Surgery, surgery. If you get injured, you broke your wrist, you get injured, you need to put a metal plate in your wrist to keep your wrist steady. That's surgery. That's for an injury. Not I'm going to wake up, phone someone, and tell the person to stuff what's in my belly in my back. Mm. <laughs> so you're, you're organic, no GMO. That's what, that's that. No steroids, bro. If you can't do it, just keep on trying. I yeah. would love to go gym. My lifestyle doesn't let me go gym. The only time I get to go gym is Saturday and Sunday. Well, you go gym. You go still go gym. Yeah, yeah. On Saturdays and Sundays. Yeah, so On you... Mondays to Fridays. I'm up too early and I finish too late to go gym. By the time I'm done, I'm feeling like I've got, by the time I'm done, I've got eight, 900 calories done. Yeah, because oh, you're active. So, it's madness, bro. Just I don't before, even know why I picked this life, but I should just go around speaking to the world. I might make more money. 
Bro, I'll, I think you. It wouldn't surprise me if that was that's that will end up. You don't know. This is the thing. When you take action, bro, you never know what, what can end up bro, happening. No. I okay. feel like I should just go around the world speaking, bro. Right. But yeah, it's gonna it, be feels I'll, right now. <laughs> I, I reckon. I reckon. It, I reckon it will happen. I mean, you're already you're already speaking around the world right now on this podcast. This will go. It will be global. We got some people in Australia, some people in Dubai, Canada. But listen, just before we wrap this up, what would be your one message? to the entrepreneurs, to the people in business right now? What would be your one message? For business and entrepreneurs, never feel stuck in a business that you can't diversify. That's big. Now, I say again, never feel stuck in a business that you can't diversify. If you're in something that makes you unhappy and is very challenging, Yes, it's part of business, but it makes you unhappy and it's challenging. You are making millions of pounds. It's very difficult, but you're achieving it, but you're drained and you don't like aspects of it. But then you have something else. You're still going to be making millions of pounds, but you're going to be happier. It's better for you. You feel like oh, by the time I do that, it's going to take a while. Everything takes a while. Don't be afraid to diversify. You're still going to be in business. You're still going to be an entrepreneur. You're still going to be earning money. You're still going to get the respect. You're going to learn new skills. You're going to prosper more. You just have to take away the factors that's probably going to hinder you and give you health problems, which mm. is the unhappiness. Yeah, definitely. Unhappiness is like a seed that grows. Same way as happiness. Yeah. Same way as strength. Same way as wisdom. Same yes. way as Same way as understanding. Same way as patience. When yeah. you plant the seed and it continues to grow, eventually it starts to show. Initially, the seed is in there, right? And you can't see it. But when you keep on watering that seed, the seed now grows and shows on your body, shows in your face, shows in your hair, shows in your hands. Don't plant seeds based on the fact that you feel stuck. Plant new seeds and progress, diversify. That's just my thing of entrepreneurs. And I've told a lot of entrepreneurs, you're so good at this thing here. Why are you not doing that thing? And I keep on saying on every podcast, I don't want to just go and speak. I might just do that one day. Like, you I might just do that one day and say, you know what? I'm just going to speak. I, I, right now, I know that business and they ain't got no money, but I might go and speak for someone that's going to tell me, listen, I'll pay everything you need. Come and speak. I want you to go around the world and speak. But who knows? But never be afraid to diversify. That's why I do these things. I do it as a, my way of giving back. This is me. Yeah. This is me. I speak to you like it's my own platform. Yeah. I'm happy to be on it. I'm happy. Like, yo, that's my brother's platform. I don't need to know you. Are you not a human being? Are you not doing something positive? You're on 31 podcasts. What about the person that's on one? You're going to motivate them to carry on. That's yeah. why I'm on, here. I'm on here like it's mine. I'm not losing no energy. I'm not acting up. I'm not misbehaving. I'm doing it like I would do it for me. And that's yeah. why it's worse. You get me? So that's my advice to business people. Never be afraid to diversify when something's overwhelming. Pick the, pick the less overwhelming stuff, but still earn the quids. So one, one, one pound to 110, 110 to 115, one to 120, do you know what I mean? It's that. Well, 10 p times 10 p, 10 p times a million is 100 grand, you know, brother. 10 p times a million is 100 grand. 10 p times Go 10 off. million is 1 m. Yeah, man. So I like that. McDonald's ain't making money. McDonald's ain't making 20 pounds, 5 pounds. McDonald's has got so much people buying at the same time around the world. They're making multi millions. So if I had, if I had five hundred branches, and every minute you have in the five hundred branches, every minute you have two people buying. That's a thousand people giving me twenty p each. It's not twenty p no more. Yeah, facts. That's how I see my mind. That's how I see my life. So you start from with the business. I start from the one truck. The one truck is turned to one truck in one location and a kitchen. Turned to one other mobile one. Then to that, before you know it, it might be 15, 20. Inshallah, I get the money to do it. 30. I'll call it my own little McDonald's. Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. what is McDonald's? It's a mobile, it's fast food, isn't it? Food you can just go and pick up. Imagine if I got 150 locations. So it's never about where you are. It's about where you see yourself. Yeah, a hundred percent. Have you seen your business trucks driving on the motorway back to back? Ten trucks 
coloring? Have you visioned it? Have you sat back in your bends while you're driving with your trucks on the side, smiling? Facts. Like, don't and worry I think about, too many people, too many people operate from where they are rather than where they're trying to get to. Yeah. And and like so it restricts them. But listen, let's wrap this one up. I know time's precious. And I definitely want to have you on again. Um maybe you might even do it face to face next time. I'm not too far. But look, for the listeners, if you're still here, I'm just gonna say it again. Go hit the subscribe button, go hit the review button, go follow Mr. Oshodi on the on the comment, Instagram. Comment, comment, let's get your feedback. Let's know what yeah. Let's know what the guys ask a question. I'll reply. I'll come on there and reply. Let's start a whole banter on this page. Yeah, definitely. Like, let's like because the, what's been said here, you need to go and listen to it again. If you got this far, go listen to it again because gems, bars. But look, for now, it's your boy, Real Talk George, Mr. Oshoddy on here. Thank you very much for coming. And we'll see you next week. God bless. God bless, brother.